Namaste, everyone. Kind of felt a little bad about last week. I feel like I just dropped the bomb and then I was like, bye. <laughs> This is really the hardest thing you'll ever go through to like see things um, for the first time, like new and fresh over and over again. Because um, I, I, I do feel like that's what was happening here. It's like I was seeing things fresh for the first time and there was a beauty to it, but also there was partial horror and processing it because I've never seen it that way and that was going on over and over the same things being seen clearer and clearer um, and sometimes it's not the same thing sometimes it's things that I forgot about um, and they, they would kind of come back and be seen in a different way and it seems like that's how it's it's sort of processed and leaving the system. Because even now, since... Like, for instance, since I'm not able to objectify anything, but especially the human body you don't see it the way that you used to. Um, you're not attracted to it in the way that you used to be. There's nothing that's enticing there. It's just neutral. It just is what it is. And that took years. It, it didn't go all at once. You know, it would just flicker in and out. Um. So not only am I not able to objectify this body um, and try to manipulate it and control it the way that I used to and and be and be so hypercritical and stressed about what it's capable of, how it looks, how it acts. I was doing that to everything else unknowingly, you know, whatever perfectionism was here, it was largely just kind of projected everywhere else and judged. Uh, that was the, the sort of judgment, I guess. Or the way of making meaning out of everything. This is good. This is bad. This is what I prefer. This is what I find attractive, unattractive. You're like nitpicking everything unconsciously. It's happening automatically without the thought of it. It's like ingrained in the system. Um, so as that's going, it's like the reason for which you found for here was the opposite sex. You know, it could be different for others. Um, the reason why I found that attractive, it was just melting away. So I didn't know why. No, it's not, I didn't know why it was like, I didn't find it attractive anymore. You know, these characteristics were very important and that was kind of diminishing here. So therefore it was just diminishing in importance there or reality. And and also, I guess, energetically behind that stuff was the the loneliness and the wanting of partnership in the traditional or societally accepted way. Um, and so all of those constraints were melting away.
And for a time, there could be like, yeah, there is no like one for anyone. Um, and it does kind of free the body up to all of the, yeah, the different constraints that are, that are put on us. But simultaneously, that, that possessiveness, that ownership, that I want this, you know, I desire this is also melting. So it's not about possessing more bodies. It's not about owning more people and having sex with more people. It's not about that at all. It's um, that's the personal energy again, you know, it's like, no, it's just the idea of like this and this have to be together forever. And that's how it is. And this con this agreement that we make with each other that's so artificial because we don't know. We just don't know the future. We don't know anything. Uh, and it feels so artificial to make that kind of contract now, you know? There's nothing wrong with it like anything else that normal people do, but just as a description, like what falls away. And so it's not that the body doesn't sometimes want like a baseline of companionship I think that's just like you know it's like a dog wanting to sit on your lap or something like that it's just not a big deal you know it's not like the dog needs to own you it, it doesn't mean it has to like possess you somehow it's just it's just biological So anyways, since all of that melted away and the the need, the desire to own someone in that way to get safety and security, it melts. And, and so a sort of chapter has closed, you know, this sort of compartment in this life has died and the body still processes um, sort of unfinished business from the past story here or past relationships that either could have been um, like the body is still actually processing all of that. And it's not, it's not mental anymore, but there'll be like dreams that come up here and there about people I haven't thought about in like 10 years um, and it's fascinating because the body's never been here before. It's never been able to shut that chapter. So it was always an open end of like, it could be, it's still possible. That fantasy can still happen. So it was never able to process completely everything. It was, it was all open-ended. Even if you thought you processed it as a person and let it go. And so that's interesting, you know, it's like emotionally, I feel nothing, but the body is still processing. Um,
I have no idea where I was going with that. <laughs> Yeah. And another thing is like, I think as you're going through this, there's still the contrast happening of like seeing objects and then not seeing objects, you know, it kind of can just flicker. But at a certain point, then the no objectification, it's not possible anymore. It just stops happening. So then that becomes the norm. And you don't uh, the specialness that was kind of there of like, oh my God, there's nothing and that tree is empty and that's not a tree. And um, uh, that, that, you know, excitement or that variety, that constant change, it's not, it just doesn't happen. You know, the body is not excited in that way anymore because this, it is just what it is. It's, it's flat. It has completely, there is no this and that anymore. And maybe there was a little bit of grieving of that as well, because, um, yeah, that's been going on for years. And it was something to hold on to, something to enjoy and make a big deal out of. Subtly feel like I have something. And so, yeah, this, it makes sense that this is the last devastation for the person because that is the end of the person. That is the death of that personal energy that is constantly trying to get from everything. And it feels like it lost it. And then when it gets it, it's like, there is a bit of excitement and there's a variety and taste There's more flavor to things. There's more stories, you know, more emotions that come from that. But when the energy to do that just depletes, it goes, um, there's nothing to say. There's nothing happening. And, and that is quite nice. It's a new kind of niceness that the person can never really understand because that energy actually has to go in order to truly understand what this is, what this is like. And it's not spectacular. The person's always looking for spectacular. And I think that's why when I, when I hear other people emphasize the spectacular or like experiences and get the next experience or get the next insight or uh, emphasizing things like that and that this is important and that uh, there's so much special meaning to it as if this is going to improve your life or something like that. But no, it's the end of you. So when people speak to the person like that, I'm like, that's the personal energy. There's no way you can do that anymore. That dies, that's gone. It's, you're not able to do that anymore. So then it just becomes obvious that pretty much most spiritual teachers are just people. Like it just becomes obvious and it's not a problem. It's like, they're doing the same thing that everyone else is doing. That's what business is. You entice people, like 
you give them reasons to follow you, to give them your money and uh, to keep seeking, really. It's no different than anything else. And so it is kind of nice when you see like even you can sense the personal energy that's there. And even when they're portraying themselves as really kind and compassionate and nice, there's definitely a lot of motives there. And they're only portraying that side of them. Um, and it's for the business and it works and people have no idea. And Yeah, it's not about diminishing people's suffering. It's not about it. It's actually, um, it's trying to just keep you in the dream. Which is also okay, you know. This is a hard thing to go through anyway. So if you can enjoy that, um, yeah, why not? Could do that till the day the body dies. And that's okay too. But yeah, I think I think there's just sometimes um, talking about that aspect of it because that's mostly who I speak to. Um, people have come from the spiritual path and they're they're completely lost because as long as the person you're following is lost themselves, like how, how are you supposed to know? And so largely, not all the time, but largely that's what I speak to people about, you know. And it's not because I enjoy it. It's not because um, it's important. It's just like those are the people that usually come to me. So it's not that you need to be on the spiritual path. It's not that you needed that at all. But I think in general, you know, um, when you're only like living from here uh, and it's quite painful and and there's only neuroticism really and you can't see clearly at all, it is a pa painful place to live. So, you know, directing the attention and focusing in on the body and um, sensations, like I think that's a great place to kind of start. Um, I don't think it's really healthy to hear this kind of stuff from that place, you know, because it's then it's just going to be mental and then it can go into places of like conspiracy theories or like you're just believing that there's no self or, um, well, you know, which is all fine too, but it, it really doesn't have too much to do with this at the end of the day it's um
but again, not to not to discourage talking or anything like that. It's um, it just slowly becomes flattened, meaning the thoughts are no different than sensations. It's the same thing. You don't know what it is. You don't know where it comes from. And then it's not really important to focus anywhere, you know. You you actually just can't avoid anything. It just is what it is. I think another thing I've been noticing recently is like um, so since the person it has a lot of ways of uh, putting meaning to a lot of things and getting some enjoyment and excitement out of things not only from a mental place, it's like, it's still lived in the body. So it feels quite genuine that that's real. Um, but since that isn't happening here anymore, it's like when the body feels really stressed or there's an anxiety producing situation, uh, there's nothing in control here that is just like, no, I don't feel anxious. It's like, no, the body feels whatever way it does. And yeah, you can't really avoid it or hide it or suppress it in any way. And it's like, it's fully there. And I could see how that is a healthier way of living in the long run, meaning you're really not able to lock it down and it's not stored in the system. It's so there and it almost is like, I know this isn't quite what's happening, but it's almost like you're processing it there. That's it. Um, and it can be quite intense for the body because it's never felt like that before. It was always able to, to drink or talk to friends or uh, work more, get lost in work. Um, like all of this plethora of stuff, it can go to anything and it can feel, you know, relief and stuff like that. Uh, but this is quite different. It's not that I can't get some relief from from stuff, but ultimately, like, you you still can't suppress whatever's there. Yeah. But again, I can see how it, it's a it is a sort of better way of living. Um, and it's not even that it the body moves through things faster. It's it's like it's processed in the moment. Uh, it's not that it won't linger for a little bit, but it just it leaves quite quickly as well. So that's why I kind of I kind of felt bad last it was it two weeks ago because um yeah this stuff is a lot for the body you know it's yeah to really see the world as it is it's it's very, very shocking for the system.
Yeah. I I was also um having some moments where I thought about like the last like office job that I had and like it was probably the most horrible experience I've ever had. Usually I had like okay jobs that weren't too bad, but this this last job that really kind of threw me over the edge was um and these are just words but like horrible narcissistic bosses that were willing to manipulate you and kind of like wring you like a cloth as much as possible um pay you very as least as they can uh and work you to exhaustion really um and encourage you by saying that you're doing good and that this is really important and um yeah and you see that that's everywhere you see that the more um it's not always true but like the more outwardly successful you actually are the more twisted you have to be like you you do do things that are very harmful to other people and you learn how to actually not see it because it's for the goal of the company it's for you're doing you're doing it for a good reason and this was actually a a company that had a positive mission you know we were doing good and yet my health was depleted to a point where I was absolutely sick and I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, but that's how lost the person can get. You know, they just, yeah, they really don't see the harm that they're, that they're doing. Oh my God, that was long again. Oops. Um, yeah, so if you want to interact, you're welcome to raise your hand. Um, yeah, I'm happy to just sit with you too. If you just want to have some support. <laughs> <laughs> 